So now what we do is we just uh, go sit in front of the stove tell a few yarns while that sets up. <laughs> now the next thing we want to do is fix this wing. So this part of the wing fell off and uh, if you notice on this wing that's good uh, there's a, a top and a bottom to each wing section. So I'm going to say this where it has the long tip here is the top. So if I'm looking at this, the part here on, on your left and my right, the long tip is on the top. So when I look at this one, that's there's the tip. So when I flip this this way, this wing has to be oriented in such a way so that the long tip is on the top. Okay? So all I'm trying to point out there is that it's important that these be aligned correctly. So I'm going to load this up with glue. Okay, I've got lots of glue because it's dripping everywhere. Alright, make sure the orientation is correct. So, like that and like this on the top. And we insert that piece in there. I apologize for the mess, but uh, even though it's spring, I didn't get around to my spring cleaning yet. Okay, the wing is in the right orientation. Shoot a couple of brads on that side, and a couple on that side. I'm just going to uh, put some more glue on this because. Like the fellow said on, on the ark, you can't have too much glue. I don't know whether he said that on the ark or not. I wasn't there, but if I was there, that's what I would have said. <laughs> oh my. Doesn't look too bad. So we set that aside and let that cook too. All right, we're back here. Uh, Working on our loon again. I was able to get to town and get some paint. And uh, what I got, this is certainly not an ad for uh, this paint, but it's a uh, trim clad, trim clad gloss black. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that this is my favorite paint, but uh, anyway, this is the one that I use a lot. So I'm going to mix this up. I'm going to paint my loon. And I'm going to paint like over the white part, not all the white part, but I'll paint them all up. And get them geared up and then in order to paint the wings I made this little stand it was just a stand I used to rest the skidoo on to keep the track off the floor since I don't have a skidoo anymore I needed something to paint my wings and this was hanging around so I just set this up and put the wings on that so now I can paint those and they can flip around no problem all right so to paint it I just have this uh, I don't know what kind of brush it is. I think I got it at the dollar store, but it's a it's a small brush, uh, and I like that for doing, you know, small little things. So anyway, just take a little paint. Uh, where the wood is bare here, it might take uh, you know maybe more than one coat. But anyway, so I'll put more than one coat on it. But uh, that's what we're going to do. And I have to remember because I sanded a lot of this body off here. I have to remember that I had white dots on it to put those back on, but I'll get those. So we'll come back when we're uh, getting a little more paint done. There. I think that's the loon body done. And uh, we'll come back with the white paint and touch that up. So we'll put that aside and then we'll get the wings out and we'll paint the wings. Now the wings don't need a lot of paint just around the edges where they were banging so that's what we'll do. We'll just paint them around the edges and here in the middle. This wing really was in good shape. This guy needs some touch up.
Oh, George, I think that's got her. Okay, we'll just put that away, let her dry. And then we'll come back and look at it again, see if it needs a second coat. And then uh, we'll do some white trim pieces on it. And that'll about do her. All right, we're continuing with the uh, Loon Whirly Gig uh, repairs and maintenance. Uh, I've got the black all finished, doesn't look too bad, the wings turned out nice. Uh, so now I'm going to do the white parts and redo the dots. Try to make it look a little bit more like a loon. So again, uh, like I said earlier, this is certainly not an ad for trim clad. But this is nice gloss white paint. I'm going to paint some white dots on it. So uh, uh, take my brush again. Just this little, I guess it's an artist brush. And uh, here and there on the loon body I'll just put some white dots. I guess they're more squares than dots, but anyhow. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I don't know if this is a splash of color, but we're putting color on it anyhow. Okay, so just like that, just to try to make it look like a loon, or somewhat like a loon. Mind you, this doesn't have to look perfect because it's going to be up on the roof. Well, I, I say that kind of with tongue in cheek because you do want it to look good. You don't want it to look like a piece of crap. And I'm sure it doesn't or won't. Oops. So you just try to doll it up a little. So then you do the same on the other side. Okay, I'll come back when we get the weight on her. Alright, so we've got the dots uh, redone on the wings, both of them. So then <coughs> we're going to bring our loon body back. And I've got some red. I'm just going to touch up the eyes and the mouth here on the, on the loon to try to make that look a little bit better. So with a tiny little brush, just put some dots on here. They're already pretty good, so I'm just going to cover in the, the dark spots on it. If I can do this. This is supposed to be a cheek line right here. And uh, do the same on the other side. And then once that's dry, I think we'll uh, put her back on the boathouse and uh, let it play for another summer. But I think we're ready. We're going to put the wings on. So I have uh, some two inch screws and I have some of these, uh, I don't know what you call them, little rosettes here. But anyways, when you put the screw in there, it, uh, because it's a countersink screw, it sits right in that uh, seat pretty good and uh, comes up flush. I also want to put a washer next to that. So I want the washer sort of to back the wing up like that, if you can see that. And I'm also going to put a washer on the back side, just to give it a little bit of support back there. And then I put that in the middle hole that we drilled in the axle. I think that's too tight. I think that's perfect. Okay, so there's one wing. So now we're going to do the same on the other side. So we put that piece together. A little too tight. Just about perfect. So there we have. Now, if you see now the way the wings are oriented, these, uh, I'm going to call them the top for now, they tip into one another. And because of that, this is interesting with whirly gigs. You figure whirly gigs pretty simple little design, right? But uh, as the wind blows across the whirly gig, the wind will hit this, spin that one in a clockwise direction, and then it'll continue to hit this one, spin it in a counterclockwise direction. So, although whirly gigs seem to be a simple uh, uh, invention, 
you know, pretty crude. Uh, there is some science behind it, and uh, that's interesting. <clears throat> okay, so then, uh, so that's it. The Wordy Gig's back together. Doesn't look too bad. So that's what Wordy Gigs are, folks. Uh, Southern Shore, South Shore, Nova Scotia, famous for Wordy Gigs. And uh, although this is not a complex or elaborate one, they can get pretty elaborate. Okay, so here on top of the uh, boathouse, this is the stand I have, so I'm going to set my wordy gig in there. So uh, I take the wordy gig, set it in there so now it can spin free. And as the wind blows, the wings will spin, I hope. So that's it. Let's go down and have a look, see if the wings will go. I don't know if the wind is going to blow it or not. It's usually quite windy down here by the lake. Doesn't look too bad. So it was a long job. It took a long time to get her done. You spend a lot of time on a little project like that. It hardly seems worthwhile. When you're finished and you look at it, I don't know, it doesn't look too bad. I think it'll work. There, they're both going, yay! So thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for all your help. <laughs> and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. And thumbs up me and uh, we'll talk to you.